Hey everybody, Asa Eric coming at you again. Uh, been uh, not working on the Camaro that much uh, this year. Uh, I got a, another little side project I need to get done uh, in the next couple of weeks, so I'll show you what I'm working on here, maybe get some advice from you guys. So my buddy with the Hellcat, I uh, got some new wheels for it, uh, some 22s, and uh, they came in a really ugly color. <laughs> Not this one. Uh, it was uh, silver, this funky silver that he didn't like, but they were on sale, so we got them cheap. So he decided to paint them, and we tried to pick out a bronze-looking color. Um, this this came out roughly okay in a lot of places, but uh, he'd never painted anything big like this before, so he ended up getting some runs in it and uh, some fisheye and stuff where they weren't cleaned properly, I think. Um, and at the end of the day, we didn't really care for this color either. Um, we tried to pick something that would have a bronze look. Um, so this is kind of a, a brown with a lot of metallic in it. So when the light hits it, it, uh, it does pop pretty nice in the light. Um, but when it's not in the light, it just looks like chocolate. Um, so no good. So I'm going to sand these guys down. Um, we've been working on them here. Uh, he sanded this one down. Then... I took them over and I did this guy. This one had a ton of fish eye in it, all those bare spots. Um, so I had to sand all that paint off good to make sure uh, they were clean. Um, these things are just a bear to sand because of all these little nooks and crannies everywhere. Um, but anyway, uh, so the plan on this is again, we're going to try and go with something, a bronze look. I don't know if any of you guys have ever painted anything bronzish before. Um, I ordered a buttload of uh, supplies from House of Candy um, of because they have uh, copper and brass and all these different kind of uh, effects packs and uh, candy concentrates, root beer. So I'm just going to try and mix and match stuff and see if I can come up with a color that I like. Um, the current plan we're thinking is we're going to go uh, satin black inside here. Uh, they're the same satin black that we used on the bottom of the car. Um, and then just just the face here is going to be that bronze color. Um, is the plan. Uh, so this wheel's done. I got that one all sanded down. This one's almost done. A little more work to do on that one. Um, and this one, I got two more to go. Uh, just getting started. So I got a lot of sanding left to do on this one. Um, Anyway, so I'll bring you back when these guys are all sanded, and I'll show you uh, this new tool I got here. Hang on. So I got a, a couple of new things that I haven't used before. I know they exist. I've seen you guys use them, but I've never used them before. Is uh, the Scotch Bright Rolock? Um, this feels kind of harsh here, but it's supposedly only a 220 grit. Um, so I'm going to try this in, in, in inconspicuous places. I didn't really want to use power tools on this anywhere because it's aluminum. I and mean, I didn't want to gouge it up, so I, everything I did was hand sanding. But uh, we'll try this. Maybe after you knock it down a little bit, it's not so harsh. But that doesn't feel like a scotch bright. It's very, very rough. Um, so we'll see. The other thing I got, now these are used a lot by jewelers. Um, they're supposedly here, little mini scotch bright discs. Let me see, and you put these on a Dremel. Um, these are going to be fun to try. I'll see how these go. Um, but these are to, to get in all these little areas here. This is really hard to sand. Um, so I'm hoping I can put that on the Dremel and just buzz that through there and take all of that paint off in the, the inside areas there. And I think when uh, when these were painted the first time, I'm not sure how good uh, this stuff was stripped and cleaned. Mostly cleaned, I guess. It didn't really strip them. He just scuffed them. Um, but I want to make sure there's no paint failure in here, so I want to make sure I get down good in all these areas. Make sure you know, the paint's not flaking off or anything as I'm sanding it. Um, anyway, but like I said, most of this uh, that I did before was all hand sanded uh, with 220. Um, so, not fun. Uh, that took me about three to four hours to get that thing sanded. He did this one in an hour. <laughs> He's a lot faster sander than I am. But he used the DA on the front of this, which I'm not brave enough to do. And this one still needs some more work though, so it's not good. it's not done. Anyway, uh, I'll bring you back uh, maybe when I crack these guys out, so you can see how they work. 
All right, uh, show you how this thing works here. I've got it on really low speed just to get familiar with it. You can see sort of what it does here. But along for the ride. I think that's pretty nice. And all I'm trying to do is scuff this, so perfect. Right now, especially here, this is the one I was most worried about. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Make sure you don't hit it with the metal tip there. I'm like down inside the Plug areas here. Probably shouldn't be doing this one handed, but. Stuff. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is nearly impossible to get in here with hand tools. Perfect. I love that. So you can order these things on Amazon. They're not very cheap, or uh, very expensive, rather. Um, and they come in all sorts of grits. I think 80 all the way up to like 600 or something. Uh, this is the 220 variety. Oh, and you can see this, you know, real quick how it just goes through that like, like butter. It's awesome. Um, nice little scuff. Perfect. I like it. Okay. Alright, let me give you the tour of sanding. Uh, this is a very long tedious process, at least the way I'm doing it. Uh, that's about four hours worth of work. It's about how much time I spent on that other one as well. So one wheel, four hours. Ugh. But again, I'm trying not to use power tools on it. I did get out that little uh, Rolock disc with the 220 theoretically scotch bright, and yeah, that was way too abrasive. That just dug right through the paint into the metal. Um, I think maybe if you ran it across something and softened it up first, it would work better, but it was pretty rough. Anyway, I'll give you the tour. Um, I've never painted wheels before, so any of you guys that have, uh, if you see anything here suspicious, uh, let me know. Uh, I was just mostly trying to get off all the orange peel that was here before um, from the paint job. Um, but then also there were places where the uh, the paint just wasn't stuck on very good. I'm going to need to go over that a little bit more. So if you look, you can see it's got kind of a rough edge, which tells me it's still ready to flake off. Um, so I tried to get everything nice and feathered out everywhere. Uh, let me tilt it up here. The inside, of course, is a is a bear. Um, the goal in here was just basically to not have anything shiny. Um, again, when you see stuff like this, that's where the paint wasn't stuck on good. So I tried to get all of the loose paint off. Um, this is where the balancing weights were. Um, he didn't take those off when he painted it. Um, so got those off now. Um, ideally, of course, this would be done with the wheel, the tire off and the valve stems out and everything. It's a lot harder to do this with all this stuff in there, but, uh, so that's the inside. Let me show the outside. This came out pretty nice, actually, here. Um, sanded down pretty smooth. Uh, again, all of these spots where you see a lot of bare metal, that's where it wasn't stuck on good. Um, combination of it wasn't scuffed well enough and probably not clean either. Um, but most of these places when the paint came off I could see it was fairly shiny underneath. Um, and it is really hard to get into these corners. Um, which is why I got this thing. Um, this thing was awesome. Uh, it did a really, really great job of getting all this stuff down inside here. And you could tell, I um, mean, took it across like a place like this and you went through it and nothing interesting happened and then you come to another place like this and the paint would flake off and so you know it wasn't uh, stuck well so you just keep going over it and going over it and so it largely would tell you the places that were troublesome which is nice I um, mean hand sanding those areas that stuff didn't come off so 
I like that tool. I think that's good. Um, I did my best to get down inside the wheel lug holes here. I'm not way down inside there. You can already see here where the paint flaked off from uh, the previous paint job. So I tried to just hit that with compressed air and sand it as you know as best I could. Again, using that Dremel, just get inside there and hit those things. You can see in these areas it works pretty well. I'm getting all of this stuff. Anyway, um, there's a few little places here that got down to metal. Um, you guys let me know if you think that's worth hitting that with some uh, primer. Uh, I do have some etch primer I haven't used for anything, some rattle can stuff. I don't know if that works on aluminum or not. I'll check. Um, I don't really want to epoxy this thing just from these tiny little spots here and there. There's very, very few places where it got down to metal. Um, most of this, what you see here is the silver paint. Um, you can see it here. There's silver paint and then there's a little white primer and then the aluminum. Anyway, uh, so two down. Uh, this one that was sanded before I got my hands on them. I'm probably going to have to spend a lot of time on that one too based on all the stuff that was going on in these corners. Uh, so a lot, a lot of stuff left to do. But uh, anyway, again, if you guys have any thoughts and commentary on the bronze paint, uh, let me know. Or if you see something I'm doing here that's like, no, 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 don't do that, uh, let me know. Uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody.